Hi and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to talk about a very important topic which is Flutter backend. Almost any application needs to connect to internet and use some services on the cloud. So the need for the backend for your application is very important. The backend plus front end is going to be called full stack. The front end is the part that the user sees and communicates with and backend is the part of the app that performs different processes for example user registration database operations or calling apis the combination of front end and backend creates the full stack of app development you can create your own backend and have full control over it and you can create your web server, your mail server, or you can serve your APIs. And it's very challenging and time consuming to have your own server. You have to manage the software, you have to manage the scalability. Nowadays, the backend is offered by backend as a service. And the backend is actually not a single server that has all the operations and services. You can select one service as a backend and use that service only. And you don't need to worry about managing the servers. What are the benefits of backend as a service? One is scalability. The procedure for scaling apps on backend as a service is very fast and easy because the service provider of the backend takes care of the scalability for you and that results in fast development you can develop and create apps faster than before because you don't need to create the backend and the server you, you just need to use the service and it's going to be simpler because the backend as a service is a stress-free model for app development because the service provider takes care of the infrastructure and backend service. And it's also versatile. The backend as a service makes it easy to create web apps, mobile apps, and develop APIs on a single platform and developers try to save on network data costs and battery life for users by allowing the mobile client to do as little work as possible because the more operation you perform on the app on the front end on the mobile device the more bandwidth you are going to use and the more energy you're going to use which decreases the battery life. So what does the backend as a service offer? Some features are APIs, push notification, authentication, storage, cloud function, machine learning. We are going to mention five backend as a service, their feature and their pricing model. The first one is back for app back for app is an open source backend based on the parse framework developers can use it for speedy development of scalable apps back for app is preferred for creating hosting and managing applications within an integrated platform and developers can utilize back for app for hosting apis for web mobile and iot applications it has a scalable database apis cloud function authentication notification and file storage the pricing is free and it also has shared hosting for five dollars a month or dedicated hosting for 250 dollars a month the second one is Parse. Parse is based on the open source framework which is used for developing application backends 
and it offers support for front-end technologies, including Java, Swift, and React Native. It has database, which is like spreadsheet. It has APIs, push notifications, social login, and automatic emails. It is free to download and it has no hosted version. The third one is Firebase, which many users are familiar with. It's a popular backend as a service platform from Google. It provides a broad range of features and components that help in mobile and web application development. Firebase is a NoSQL database that follows the JSON protocol for carrying out data storage actions. It has real-time database, REST API, scalable hosting, analytics, test lab, machine learning. It is free and it has pay-as-you-go version for paid plan. The fourth one is Backendless. It offers dedicated and cloud-based servers for users and it provides user-defined APIs. It also has visual programming, which is a service that allows you to program a logic based on visual programming without coding. For example, here you can set a condition that says set shopping cart to get data from cash and then you have the if statement if shopping cart is null do set shopping cart to empty and this allows you to create a logic very fast and you can add this as a cloud function to your application it has free plan and the paid plan starts at $25 per month. And the last one is AWS Amplify. This is another backend as a service platform that is one of the widely used platforms today. AWS offers secure and fast development for users and users can experience fast access to their resources and advanced functionality with their backend service. It offers authentication, GraphQL, REST APIs, data store, analytics, and notification. And it starts by free tier plan and then pay as you go for paid version. So how do you choose the backend as a service for Flutter? Firebase is the official recommendation of Google. It works great for small to medium sized applications. And the following services work great for applications when you use the Firebase. Authentication, you can integrate username password authentication. You can integrate Google sign in or other social media sign-in service into your application. You can set up push notification. You can have cloud function that executes or triggers a function set of codes when something happens in your database, for example. And you can have machine learning integrated into your application without coding. And when it comes to database, Firebase is going to become a bit complicated when you want to have complex queries because it's a NoSQL database and based on JSON structure. So if you want to have a complex database, for example, if you want a SQL database with multiple tables and you want to join the tables to get the information you want, Firebase is going to be a bit complicated. If you have a simple database like information on a product or information of service 
or details of a customer, the Firebase database is great. But if you have a bit com more complex database, then it's better for you to select a SQL database and choose one of the other services that we have mentioned before. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.